but yeah, um, okay. If you guys haven't done square roots yet, then um, we'll just we'll just review up until chapter eight then, and then we'll start from chapter nine. Um, either way, uh, as long as we uh, start off where you guys left off, that's where uh, we're that's what we're looking for to do, right? So review. We're gonna look to do a brief review over a lot of the material um, beforehand, right? From chapter one all the way up to chapter eight. So it's gonna take a little bit, uh, maybe one or two classes, uh, I can, uh, maybe actually two or three, um, depending on how fast we're able to get through it. So chapter one, chapter one talks a lot about the properties of arithmetic, right? The very first chapter talks about, the very first uh, section of that chapter talks about addition. Some of the properties of addition that we talked about are what we like to call the commutative property. I cannot write right now. My handwriting is so bad. <laughs> Sorry if you can't read it very well. Uh, commutative property and associative property. Can, does anyone remember what any of the, what either of these two is? Um, I do. Okay. Um, commutative property, I think, is like for addition. Uh, you could do one plus one or one plus one. It, either way, or like one plus I mean, two or two plus one. It's good, all good. the same. Or like in multiplication, if you like two times one is the same as one times two. Okay. And what about the associative property then? Um, associative property is like I could do one plus two first and then plus three, or I could do one and then plus two plus three. Yep. And then the exact same way, this also translates over to multiplication with one times two times three. It's the same thing as one times one two, two times three. Yep. So this, these two uh, ideas between the two of them basically lets us say that we can add numbers in any order we want and we can multiply numbers in any order we want, right? So this means that we can pick an easier order to make uh, to add or multiply these numbers through that maybe the math behind it becomes easier, right? So for example, if we have a bunch of numbers that are added together, let's say we are adding like 47 plus 51 plus 53 plus um, 55, right? We could go ahead and add the 47 and the 53 together because that would make 100, right? And then from there, the rest of the math is a little bit easier. So just a, one such example of that would have been to do that. So, and then one of the other things about addition is the very basic idea that if you add zero, it's the same thing as the same number, right? So that's um, just an idea that is um, pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, it's also something that you guys have probably work, been working with for a long time. So it's not anything new there. Next up, multiplication. We actually already mentioned uh, the commutative property and the associative property already, but there's one more for multiplication. Um, and and um, so th this is going to be your first class with me. So just, I guess, um, one of the things I should go ahead and mention is if you have any questions, um, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'm always looking at the chat. I'm always uh, looking at uh, the participant list. So if you have um, questions, you can like, raise your hand, just directly ask it in the chat. You can unmute and just directly ask and anything works uh, for me as long as we get those questions answered. But um, another thing that I want to mention is if I'm speaking too quickly, just let me know, um, I'll slow down. If, um, if my handwriting is a little bit bad, uh, please um, like, let me know, I'll rewrite it or something. Just anything, to, um, anything that you need, just let me know and I'll uh, address it. And as for, as for uh, a lot of the class, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. Um, sometimes I'll just go ahead and ask it openly. Sometimes I'll go ahead and direct it to a single person. Um, if I if I ask you to, if I ask a question from you, um, if you'd like to, you can unmute and answer. That's usually the fastest way. Um, but uh, if you are a little bit shy, if you don't want to open up your mic, if there's a lot of background noise or anything like that, uh, feel free to just answer in the chat. But um, whenever I uh, ask you a question, and, like, and you're just going to use the chat, just uh, make sure to always. Uh, say something in the chat first so I know to expect it there. Um, and as for the date this class ends, I'm not completely sure, but
but I, I would imagine it's sometime in December. All right. So multiplication, we talked about, we, we, we talked about how um, the community property and associated property both still stand there. Now, um, Katie, Katie, you there? Yeah. Okay. So what's the other property that multiplication has that is not shared with addition? What did we call it? Do you know it? I wasn't here last sessions, the last sessions. So I don't really know like what we, what you guys were talking about before. So like, have you gone through the um, chapter one through chapter eight? No. I think you might be in the wrong class then. Um, this, uh, this class is supposed to be for people who were here during the summer and have already went through chapter one through chapter eight. Oh, my mom just told me she signed me up for this class. Well, um, if you if you can keep up, then we'll uh we'll go we'll run with it. But um, if you think that this is too fast for you, um, especially since I mean it's possible that you just haven't learned this, right? So if this is too much for you, um, we can uh probably we can probably get you into the other one instead. But right, um, so <clears throat> the other property that multiplication has is what we call the distributive property. Um, Katie, have you heard of this before? Yeah. Do you know what this says? It's basically like distributing the other factors, mm -hmm. well, like the other factors of the numbers that you're multiplying together. Right, so for... Um, for commutative property, we said that a plus b equals b plus a, right? What about for the, for the distributive property? Can you give me an example of how that would look like? Um, okay, so you could say like, can I give you numbers instead of variables? Yeah, sure, that works okay. too. Oh, one second. No worries, no worries. Okay, so you could do like 10 times something. So like, let's say six plus three. Yeah. Okay. And then what she would do would be like 10, you could divide into like two times five and you could put those in parentheses. Well, no. Yeah. And then you would put six plus three. Uh, six plus three, sorry, not three plus six. six. Um, you could, you could. Uh, but that's not actually the distributed property that we're thinking of here. So what the distributed property says is that if you have this here, this is basically a mix and match between multiplication and addition, right? Um, well, you I can... have a question. Yeah? Oh, sorry. No, go for um, it. Wouldn't it be 10 times six? Um times 10 times three or something like that, or plus 10 times three. Yeah, so this would be plus 10 times three, right? Okay. So that's kind of what, that's what um, I was going to uh, go for. But right, um, the idea here isn't that you want to break up this 10 times five, rather rather you were looking at the wrong side here, um, which is fine, right? Like it's it's totally, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, it, like this is this that you the thing that you gave me is still correct. It's just not um it's just not where it's just not exactly where we wanted to go with this. So you looked at the ten rather than the six plus three here. The distributive property takes a look at the addition part of this uh, mix and match between the two, right? And what we do here is we split this up. We split it up into two separate parts at this at this point. We do ten times six, and then we add ten times three. And this ends up being the exact same thing, right? Because right here, this is, because um, the way that multiplication works is um, multiplication is repeated addition, right? For 10 times six plus 10 times three, that's the same thing as saying, all right, I have six tens and six threes, right? But then if I group together the sixes and threes, now I just have 10 nines, which is exactly what I have up here. So that's what we're looking at, Katie. Does it make sense?
Okay, good. So if we move on from here, we talk. We then talk about what we uh, called negation. Negation is really uh, used with addition a lot of the times. Negation basically just shows that if you um, if you have a positive number, right? Let's say you have, for example, four. If you have this number, there's a number that you can add to four that will make it zero. That is what we call the negation of this number. Typically, that number is going to just be the negative form of that number instead. So in this case, that's going to be four plus negative four is equal to zero, right? So this is the key idea behind negative numbers. It's uh, what we use when we when we talk about these. It's what it's the idea that you it, it's the way that I want you to think about negative numbers. Negative numbers are just positive ones, except not right. They're not positive. So uh, it, and 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 when you work with subtraction, this idea is going to be very important. It's it's going to be um, one of the key concepts behind uh, how you want to think about subtraction, how you want to think about negative numbers in multiplication. It's going to be uh, very important. So when we work with negative numbers, um, one of the things that we talked about was that the negation of the number is the number that you add to it to make it negative. Well, if 4 plus negative 4 is equal to 0, then negative 4 plus 4 is also equal to 0. But if this line up here basically meant that negative 4 is the, negative, is the negation of 4, then max, what does the second line say? Right, negative four, like, like the first line basically meant that negative, <clears throat> sorry, the first line meant that negative four is the negation of positive four. What does the second line say here? Four is the negation of ne negative four. Yeah, that is exactly uh, what we're looking for here. Four is the negation of negative four. So the idea behind this is that positive numbers are just a negative form of negative numbers, right? So that means that the negative of a negative is a positive or um, two wrongs make a right, if you really want to think about it that way. Uh, it's, 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 people tell you that that's not, that's not true, right? And um, yeah, no worries, Max, no worries. Uh, people will always tell you that's not true, but in mathematics, it's exactly uh, the way things work. But right, so one of the other things about um, arithmetic that we should talk about is the order of operations or PEM PEMDAS, right? <clears throat> so you may not have heard of PEMDAS before, but what PEMDAS is, is it's an acronym to let you know the order of these operations. In order, they are parentheses. Can I say? Sure, go for it. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And also, I think when you have like groups of like two multiple parentheses, exponents, and then if you have multiplication and division, you do it left to right. And then addition and subtraction is the same thing, left to right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, multiplication and division are done together. Addition and subtraction are also done together. Now, the reason why multiplication and division are done together, and as well as addition and subtraction being done together, this is something that we're going to talk about right now. So we just talked about what a negation is. We just talked about what um, what that idea meant, how you uh, find a negative of a number, right? Now, Sophia, when you're talking about subtraction, what's another way to think about subtraction? Like, if I say um, four minus, negative. yeah, that's exactly it. Four minus three is the exact same thing as four plus negative three. So with this idea in mind, that means that subtraction is actually just addition, right? Well, if you think about it that way, then that makes sense as to why addition and subtraction are done at the same time, because they are one and the same. They are the exact same thing. That's why they're done at the same time. Now, with that idea in mind, 
that's what we're that's what we were looking for here. But now we need to express why are multiplication and division done at the same time. This idea comes down to what we call reciprocals. R e c i p r o c a l s reciprocals. The reciprocal of a number is very similar to the way that we calculated the negation of a number. The negation of a number was the number that we would have to add to another one in order to make it zero. As for the reciprocal, what we're looking for is the multiplication kind of um, uh, the multiplication kind of uh, uh, equivalent, right? But the number that we multiply in order to equal zero is always going to be zero, right? Zero times anything is equal to zero. One times anything is equal to itself. So uh, maybe that number that we should be working with is not zero, but rather the number that we multiply by something in order to equal one. Or um, let's, oh, you're, I think you're about to say the exact same thing I just said. Um, um, I just wanted to mention mm -hmm. that anything times zero, zero, except for if it's to the exponent of zero, then it would be one. Um, yes, but right now we're just talking about multiplication. So uh, we haven't we haven't mentioned exponents yet. So don't worry about that. But exponents are going to be next. Um, but yeah, so uh, we just said that multiplying anything by zero equals zero. So that's really not the end result that we want, because that's just going to give us the same number every single time, right? So what about we work with one instead? So if we work with one instead, then let's say, for example, four, what number times four is equal to one. Kyle, uh, Ky uh, sorry, Kylie, um, do you know what this number would be? Kylie, Kylie, hello, you there? Guess not. Um, let's start back up from the top then. Uh, okay, who's it? Um, your computer doesn't have a mic. Uh, sorry. Uh, in that case, uh, yeah, feel free to just go ahead and answer with the chat box then. Um, I know I know you weren't here for it earlier. Uh, sorry, who's uh, Kylie's using uh, the chat to answer here. So we'll let them answer. Um, but yeah, so if you don't have a mic, you can't hear anything. I'm talking. Can you guys hear me? Okay, yeah, just rejoin then. Um, yeah, because I, I'm, I'm talking like everyone else can hear me. So, um, but yeah, so uh, if you don't have a mic, feel free to go ahead and just answer with the chat. That works perfectly fine as well. But yeah, so what number would go here? Four times something equals one. What number would that be here? Um, oh. Can I say? Um. We'll let, we'll let Kylie answer this one. I think okay. they're answering here. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. If you're not sure, just um, say so in the chat. Hold on, I'm, I'm taking a look at it. Not sure, I think a negative. Um, not quite. So we'll actually we'll actually take a look at what that looks like in just a moment, but um, but we'll see why it's not necessarily a negative number. So um, we'll we'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, who's uh, what's the answer uh here? Sorry, I actually don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, do you mind letting me know first? Um, it's Hu Zi. Hu Zi. Okay, sure. Gotcha. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> um, so what number goes here? 0.25. So 0 0.25 or one fourth, right? So what's going on here is we're really just taking that number and we're saying, all right, what is one divided by that number, right? Because what we're doing here is, sure, we haven't really thought about division yet, but we actually know what division is, right? If we divide both sides by four, right? If we say four times some number, is equal to one. If we divide both sides by four, then we say that that number 
has to be equal to one divided by four. And that's exactly how we reach this point, right? So think about, um, think about like what one over four really means. One over four means one divided by four, right? So if that is the same thing as one divided by four, then if we multiply that by four, then it should equal one, right? So that's really what's going on here. Uh, Kylie, does that make sense to you? Just let me know uh, what you think. But right, so that's the way that we want to think about this reciprocal idea. It's really just one over that other number. But let me think. Well, if we said that the definition of a reciprocal was the number that gets multiplied to another one in order to equal one, well, one of the first things that we talked about multiplication was that um, was the commutative property, right? We can order it in any order we want. So if we do four times one fourth, this equals one. But the exact same idea, one fourth times four is equal to one. So if the first line, uh, Katie, if the first line says that the reciprocal of four is one fourth, then what does the second line here say? Um, the reciprocal of one fourth is four and equals one. Yeah, so the reciprocal of one fourth is four. So the reciprocal of fractions now is just the whole number instead, right? We just flip it back over. So what we really want to think about is four is the same thing as four over one. So when we're taking that reciprocal, all we're really doing is we're just flipping that uh, fraction over on itself. So right. Now, uh, to address your other uh, question, Kylie, um, we did mention uh, that I, I, I did say that multiplying by a negative doesn't necessarily make that number equal to one. So here's what multiplying, here's what a negative number really is. It, one, one of the ways that we can think about a negative number, so for, let's say, for example, negative three, the way that we can think about this number is we can think about it as negative one times three instead. And the reason for this is because of the way that, um, the way that, negative uh, the way that that uh those multiplications kind of work out like think about three times three right this is equal to nine three times two this is equal to six three times one this is equal to three three times zero and then three times negative one so um uh, christina i know you're i know you just joined but for this kind of pattern here. Do you see kind of what's going on here? Like what would three times zero be equal to, uh, Christina? Zero. Zero, right? And then continuing that pattern more, what would the following one be? Um, uh, uh. So first off, what's the pattern between each row here? They go uh, to the left. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, so it, um, uh, I don't know, how do I say that? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like minus three. Each yeah, time. yeah, it subtracts by three. Yeah, nice uh, assist there, Katie. But yeah, so Christina, if every, if, if from row to row here, it goes down by three, then would you expect that pattern to continue once again? Yeah. Yeah, so if it continues once again, what is zero minus three? Negative three. Negative three. So that right here, this idea is the critical reason why we can always say that a negative number times, uh, a negative one times a number is just equal to ne the negation of itself, the negative form of itself, right? So this idea then, uh, Kylie, this would show you that if you multiplied a negative number by a positive number, you're always going to end up with a negative number, right? Because if you multiply negative one times X times Y, where X and Y are variables. Is everyone here familiar um, with variables? Is, does, is anyone um, unfamiliar with how this works? Uh, if you're not familiar with it, I won't use this example. So this is your one chance to let me know if I cannot use this. Okay, so if X and Y are both positive numbers, then this product of X and Y, that's also going to be positive. But once we multiply that by negative one, that's gonna now force us into a negative result, right? Like think about what's going on here. So if we multiplied that positive four by a negative number, 
that would have ended up being a negative, res negative result, which would not be that positive one that we were looking for. So that's why that would not have worked. But yeah, so with that being said, there's a couple more things that uh, do kind of need to be looked at. Um, I'm, I know I'm skipping over a decent amount because it is a review after all. Um, but if we look at um, multiplication and addition of like, with that with that negation idea as well, like think let's think about um, what happens for say for example, ten times six minus three. So this right here, instead of addition inside of the parentheses, like we were used to with um, the distributed property, instead of addition inside there, we're now looking at subtraction instead. But the thing about subtraction is that one of the things that we had talked about earlier was that subtraction is the same exact thing as addition. So- um, oh, I was just gonna say the answer. Okay, go for it. Um, so 10 times six minus three. So using the distributive property once again, except for its subtraction, shouldn't it be 10 times six minus 10 times three? Or is 10 times three? Or 30? Both of these ways would work. So this is exactly um, what we're looking at. But yeah, so that's really just it. All right. So um, yeah, that's, and, and then if we had, for example, a negative outside of here, negative four plus three, let's say, for example, this is the exact same thing as negative one times four plus three. And then from here, we would just go ahead and distribute that negative sign, uh, like that negative one, right? So one of the big key concepts that we want to look at is that negative one times X is the same thing as negative X, but all right. Enough about that. So we just talked about the idea that um, it, of, of what a, of what a reciprocal was, right? We mentioned that a reciprocal is simply just going to be the number that you multiply by another number in order to equal one. Well, how does division work? Division is exactly this. Like when we say one over four, division is this line right here. Well. Multiplying by one is the same thing as not changing the number, right? So if we do, um, let's say, for example, 40 times one fourth, then this right here is the same thing as just 40 divided by four, right? So as you can see, division is actually just multiplication. It's the multiplication of, it's the multiplication of a reciprocal. And that is why multiplication and division happen at the same time as well, because multiplication and um, division, they're one and the same. It's like addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction, one of them is just the addition of a negative number instead, while for uh, division, it is just the multiplication of a reciprocal instead. All right. So that was the entirety of chapter one. Chapter one, properties of, of arithmetic, um, just going off of exactly what addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division were, how they were done, what the properties were, what the importances were. Now, after that, we talk about exponents. Exponents is very similar, to, uh, exponents are very similar to multiplication. Now, multiplication is the process of repeated addition, right? Uh, for example, six times seven is just six plus six plus six, seven times, right? Or seven plus seven plus seven, six times, right? So what about exponents, um, Max? What about exponents? What is, and what is the definition of an exponent here? Like there's a base number. Mm -hmm. And then at the top of like right top of that base number, there's an exponent. Yeah. So and whatever the exponent is, you have to multiply the base number like nine and nine. It's just nine times nine times nine say, times nine. 
let's say we did nine to the third power. What, what would this be equal to then, max? Uh, max, still used to it. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, nine times nine times nine. So, um, Or that yeah, would that's... be 81 times nine. Would it be one times nine? 81 times oh, nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, 81 or times 729. nine. 729. Yep. Yeah, so that's uh, what would go on here. But right, so the idea for this is that what you're really doing with an exponent is repeated multiplication, right? Addition is, uh, multiplication is repeated addition. Exponents are repeated multiplication. So that is what's going on here. And that also kind of explains why exponents happens before multiplication. Because exponents, if you think about it as repeated multiplication, right? But multiplication is repeated addition. Multiplication comes before addition. That's why exponents, repeated multiplication, comes before multiplication, which is repeated addition, right? So that's kind of why that takes priority over that. And then parentheses are just like, ignore everything else, do us first kind of idea. So yeah, if we're looking at just the basic square, we're just multiplying that number by itself, right? Like, um, I'm pretty sure at this point, uh, you, you all have at least a couple of the squares memorized. Um, hopefully you have uh, one through 12. If you plan on doing things like competitional mathematics, you'll probably want all the way up to at least 25, maybe even 30. Um, but 31 and 32 are also pretty easy. So probably up to there. Um, but yeah, so that, those are squares, right? But then what about higher exponents? For cubes, it's not really too necessary to memorize those. I would say maybe like one through 10 if you, if you plan on doing uh, competitional level stuff. But um, if you're just doing, if, you're, if it's just regular school, um, just maybe like one through five is enough really for cubes. But right, so those exponents do go higher and and it's 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 very common to be asked on uh, computational mathematics, especially base two. Base two is very very important to know. But it's any power that's higher than one is pretty easy, right? Like it's just the number multiplied by itself that many times. You can calculate any of them by hand. It's it's not that bad. But what about the first power? So, um, Sophia. What about the first power? What does the first power of a number look like? It's the number. It's the number itself, right? Well, if we think about how that works, it's basically you're saying, all right, if we have the first power, it's just the, it's just the number itself, not multiplied by anything else. And that's exactly how, that's exactly kind of how it works, right? But if we go there, yeah, base times one, right? Like it works out, but, if we think about this, if we think about it in the order, in the same kind of way that we thought about the multiplication of negative numbers, right? The multiplication of sorry, who's uh, who's um, I'm I got something uh, that I kind of want to finish here. So if you think about it, the way that we we multiplied by negative numbers, right? We listed out how those work one by one, right? So what if we did the same thing with exponents? If we do the same thing with exponents, let's say for example, um. Let's use nine as an example, right? So nine cubed is equal to 729. Nine squared is equal to 81. Nine to the first is equal to nine. Then what would nine to the zero be here? Yeah, who's one. One, right? Because what's going on here is that between each row, as you go down the rows, you're just dividing by nine, right? So this pulls you down to one. And if you keep on going on, nine to the negative first power would be equal to? Point one. something. Yeah, and Max has that written out in the fraction form, one ninth, right? So as you keep um, on going on, you'll find that as you go, these actually match up here a little bit. The negative powers are just reciprocals of the positive ones. So if we use this idea. Um, yeah. I just wanted to share. I, um, I learned from another class any an easy way to 
calculate the squares of any number under 100. It's how to calculate its square as long as its second digit is not five. Okay. It, sure. The formula is x x times y plus d squared. X times y plus d squared. Yes, x times y. Okay, so what do these numbers stand for? So, so you have a number. Let's say I want thirty nine squared. Let's just say I want 39 squared. And so X would be 40, Y would be 28, or Y would be 38, and D would be one. And so one squared would be one, so plus one. So that would be 40 times 38 plus one. Okay. And that's how you find the square. X is one, X is the nearest 10 next to 30, next to your number. So 39 would be 40. And so it kind of explains why you can't have 35 since it's even on both sides. The fives are even easier actually, did you know? Right, there's another formula for it too. So do you know why this formula works? Uh, I'm guessing not, right? So maybe. maybe okay. So here's how that formula works. So, um, if you think about, um, if, if you use the idea that uh we had talked about before, right? We talked about uh the the distributive property. So what we had mentioned was that the distributive property works for, um, for like an a times b plus c, right? This we said was equal to a, b plus a, c. But what if instead on both sides we had, let's say, for example, a plus b times c plus d. Well, if we thought about a plus b as an x, this would be the same thing as x times c plus d, right? This would be equal to x, c plus x, d. But x is actually equal to a plus b. So now this is equal to a plus b times c plus a, time, a plus b times d which is equal to AC plus CB plus AD plus DB, right? Does that look good to you all here? Any questions so um, far? I think the teacher I learned it from explained it with like the binomial square formula. Yeah, but you, most of us haven't learned that in this class, I think. So I'm not going to use that. It was in a grades three through five class. I'm just gonna use uh, I'm just gonna use stuff that I've already mentioned. But right, so this right here is what we like to call the FOIL method. If we look at a plus b times c plus d, a times c is first. Then we have right first. Then we look at a times d. That's right here. Outer. B times c, inner and b times d last. That's what FOIL stands for. We multiply the first outer inner last, add them all up together. So that's, what's, that's what we're looking at here. So now if you use this, and this, if you use it for higher powers, you can call it that binomial theorem uh, right there. But now if we think about it uh, in, the in the terms of, let's say, for example, let's say we're looking at, um, some x plus a times x minus a or or or, or let's use uh, let's use that'd be zero typically. no it wouldn't a plus b times Wait. a minus b this would not be this would not necessarily be equal to zero a plus so if you a plus b plus wait, 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 okay so if you if we use the foil method here right uh, let's actually write out these letters. Let's write out these letters with um, different colors. So you can, got, you can kind of see uh, what's being multiplied by what, right? So first off, we have first, which is A times A, right? So we have A times A plus outer, which is A times negative B. So we have to be very important that we make sure to include that negative sign, right? Then we have inner, which is B times A.
Then we have last, which is b times negative b. So now if we include up all of our signs, right? If we make sure all of our signs are correct, then we're looking at a squared minus ab plus ab minus b squared. Minus ab plus ab cancels out, which ends up giving us a squared minus b squared. Well, if we think about this in the terms of, let's say, for example, 39 squared, right? Because that was the example that was given to us. Well, we, we know that 39 squared, if we use 39 squared as, uh, as one of our a's, right? If we say this is equal to a, 39 itself is equal to a, then we can say, well, this is e this minus, well, the, the um, a plus b times a minus b would equal to 39 squared minus a b squared, right? Well, what way can we get 39 to multiply? What way can we get this to be multiplication of some easy number, right? An easy number would be one that ends in zero. So if we say the easy number is 40, which is the closest 10, then we're saying that a plus b here is equal to 40, which would then make a minus b, right? A minus b would then have to be 38. So that's why we did 40 times 38. Because 39, we said, OK, we want to bring this up to the nearest 10. That would be 40. We add, we added 1, right? So if we do that, then we have to also subtract 1. So that's why we get this 38 down here. Well, this 40 times 38, that's equal to 39 squared minus 1 squared. So if we add 1 squared to both sides, then that just becomes this right here is equal to 40 times 38 plus 1 squared. And that is how we got the x, y plus d squared formula. So that's where the proof of this comes from. Uh, yeah, who's it? What is it? Um, I just wanted to add also the second b could also equal d times 2. Because d is the distance from 39 to 40. So times 2. It'd be 2. So, yeah. Mm, no, it would, it would only Wait. be half. It would, it would only, it would not be the distance from 38 to, it would be the distance from 39 to 40. Not 38 to 40. D has to be one here. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, for the rest of you who are seeing, who are, I'm guessing seeing this for the first time. Um, does it look good? Does it make sense to like how it works? I know I went through it pretty quickly, um, but that's because we have other things that we uh, need to get to here. Um, if it made sense to you, just like, I don't know, uh, you can give me a reaction, uh, say something in the chat, but like, if you have any questions on this, um, please let me know. Uh, Hulza, did you want to say something else, or was that, or is the hand still from the last thing that you oh, said? Oh, no, sorry, I okay. forgot to take the hand down. You're good, you're good. All right. There. Okay, okay. All right, so, yeah, that's how this formula here is used, and we actually have another one for uh, squares ending in five. Um, that does end up working a little bit easier, but we're not going to worry about that right now. I want to finish up uh, chapter two. So if we look at, um, so the way that we had looked at the negative numbers was a uh, negative number multiplication. Um, Kylie, I know, I know I showed, I showed this, especially because you had mentioned it. Uh, otherwise I would have actually totally forgotten. So it was actually, it was a very good mistake to make. It, it made sure that I talked over a certain point, right? So remember how, remember how we looked at those negative, um, oh, sorry, we actually, already talked about this for the exponents, right? The ex the negative exponents are just the reciprocals of the positive ones. So if we think about that, um, Kylie, um, can you come up with some sort of formula uh, for, let's say, for example, um, a to the negative b power? What is this going to equal in terms of um, positive a and positive b? Like, what is this going to be? Eight to the negative five. I mean, 
I think you're saying that this here looks like an eight and this here looks like a five, right? I don't think my handwriting is that bad, is it? <laughs> oh, oh, um. So I was saying like for an A to the negative B power, what would it be in terms of positive A and positive B? So we're still looking at um, variables here. So, or, or, or if you don't want to use uh, A and B, we could say X, X to the power of negative Y. What would this be in terms of positive X and positive Y? Because one of the things that we had mentioned was uh, neg nine to the negative one was equal to one over nine, nine to the negative two is equal to one over 81. We had showed that these were actually just reciprocals of their positive version. So what would X to the negative Y be equal to? Does my question make more sense now? OK, OK. So what would this be equal to here? Need some time to think, I guess. If you're not sure, we can throw it over to someone else. Can I do it? Yeah, sure. Wait, is it that a to is it that a to the power of negative b thing? Um, I mean, both of these are one and the same, right? So, uh, Kylie, you are thinking on the right <laughs> tracks. It should be one over something because a negative power is going to be a reciprocal of something. But, um, Sophia, what is that something going to be? X to the negative Y, what is that going to be here? It's one over X to the power of Y. Yep. And that's exactly it, right? Because we saw that here with nine to the negative first equals one over nine. Well, it's one over something, but what is that something? Well, nine is just nine to the first power. Kylie, does that look good to you? Does that make sense for you here? OK, yeah. And um, and then for nine to the negative two, it's the exact same thing here. We're just doing one over 81. 81 is just nine squared, right? So um, yeah, that's really what we're looking at here. And that's actually it for chapter two. We really just looked at exponents, uh, squares, higher powers, right? zero as an exponent as well as negative exponents and then from there that's really just it so moving on chapter three is called number theory so in number theory here what we talk about is um a lot about just like the a lot of just basic ideas that you guys have probably uh went through a bunch of times right so first thing that we talk about is what multiples are multiples of a number are just if we can say that, like, let's say, for example, three, right? The multiples of three are just going to be any number that is divisible by three. But what does divisibility mean? We don't know what that is yet. So let's use another definition, right? Multiples of three are just equal to some number times three, any number times three. As long as it, as long as it can be written as some number times three, then it is a multiple of three. For example, one times three or three is a multiple of three. 2 times 3, or 6, is a multiple of 3, and so on and so forth. For 9, 12, 15, 18, so on and so on and, so, and, and forever, right? So that's what we call a multiple, OK? So moving on from that idea, right? Because, I mean, that's really just it, right? Uh, if we think about... Um, how we how we had listed out those numbers right if we, when we had said like three six nine twelve fifteen like we can see that we're actually just adding three each time right and then if you add one multiple of three to another multiple of three it's like three x plus three y right this is just equal to three times x plus y which is actually katie what property did I use right here to go from the, this left side that down to the right side? What property did I use? Was it the 
distributive property? It is. But normally you see the distributive property in this direction, right? So this is the this is another application of the distributive property that allows you to pull together from two terms, merge them into kind of one multiplication, right? So this is the opposite direction of the uh, of the of the distributive property that actually a lot of people have a struggle to uh, to make use of a lot of times, right? So yeah, nice job here. So if we think about that, that means that if we add together one multiple of one multiple and another multiple, it still is a multiple, right? Now, if we're looking at, um, for example, uh, multiples of 15, right? Well, 15 is equal to three times five, right? So 15 X is what we're going to be looking at if we have a multiple of 15. This is equal to three times five times X. So what does that mean? Um, Christina, what does it mean about a multiple of 15? Like if you have a number that's a multiple of 15, what does that also mean immediately? Um, it's divisible by 15. <laughs> well, we haven't talked exactly about what divisibility means yet, but that would be true, yes. But why did I bring up three and five here? Oh, because um, uh, three times five is 15. So then that would also mean that like um, a multiple of 15, I mean, is that what you were saying? Multiples of 15 will also be multiples of three and five. Yeah. That's that's what I was going for. But does that make sense to you? Does that look good? Yeah. OK, yeah. And that's exactly what we're going on here. Just every multiple of 15 has to be a multiple of 3, has to be a multiple of 5. But multiples of 3 are not necessarily multiples of 15. Multiples of 5 are not necessarily multiples of 15. But multiples of 3 and 5 have to be multiples of 15. All right. So. That's kind of uh, the idea that goes on here. And if we're talking about one more thing, like if we say, for example, uh, how many multiples of three are there between zero and 100? The way that we would do this is we would find the first multiple of three, we would find the last multiple of three, divide everything by three, right? This goes from one to 33. How many numbers are there from one to 33? That's gonna be 33. But what if it? Uh, what if our starting point wasn't one? Let's say, for example, we were asking how many numbers are there from uh, how many numbers are there from five to twenty-four? Uh, Max, how many numbers are there here from five to twenty-four, including both sides? How many numbers are there? See, this is what we like to call the fence post problem. So, Max, how did you find your answer of 19? That's not how you did it. Because the way that you did it was you subtracted 20, you subtracted five mi uh, 24 minus 5, right? And that's how you got your, your answer of 19? OK, well, let me ask you an easier question then, Max. How many numbers are there from 3 to 4, including both sides, 3 and 4? 3 to 4? There's three numbers there? Including both ends, 3 and 4. How many numbers are there, 3 and 4? I think you're just getting a lot just getting really confused but right so three and four right if we just list them out three four there's going to be two numbers here right so do you see why that subtraction would be wrong here because if you directly subtracted four minus three that would give you the answer of one right but that clearly can't be the correct answer right because if you just think about it three four including both numbers that's two numbers. That's not the one that we were looking for. So if we think about what's going on here, let's think about how subtraction really works. When we do subtraction, if we go from, let's say, for example, uh, like that 24 all the way down to five, right? 
if we do subtraction, subtracting by one will pull us to the next number. Subtracting by 19 puts us to five. But what's, what's happening when you subtract is you count one of the edges, but not the other. It doesn't matter which one you count. It, it's not, it could be the five that you counted and not the 24. You counted five, but not 24. But whenever you do this subtraction to count how many numbers there are, but including both sides, you miss one of the ends. Like think about that three and four, right? If you subtract by one, you end up getting just, you, if you subtract the two numbers, four minus three, you end up getting one, which can't be right, right? Because there's two numbers. If you do four and two, two, three, four, there's three numbers here, but if you subtract, you only get two. So if you directly subtract, you will always be short one. So for 24, for, for the numbers five through 24, there's actually 20 numbers there. Because what you do is you do 24 minus five equals 19, but then you add back the number that you forgot to count. Does it make sense, Max? Does it look good to you why you have to add one? Okay, good, yeah. And this, the reason why this is called the fence post problem is because it's a pr pretty famous idea. It's um, if, you, if you have, say for example, a fence, right? Uh, 10 meters of fence, and you're putting one fence post every meter. Well, you have to put a fence post right at the start. Then you put one at one meters, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? Well, if we count how many fence posts there are, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Wait, well, wait, we only had 10 meters, but there's 11, meter, there's 11 fence posts. But that's because we had to put one at the start and at the end. And if you think about it, 1 to 33, we always take it for granted that there's 33 numbers there. But if we do this, do the subtraction there, that would be 33 minus 1 equals 32. So that is why uh, whenever you're trying to count from one number to another, see how many numbers there are, you have to add back the number that you didn't, that you didn't count if you just directly subtract. All right. Now, with that, that's going to be all the time that we have uh, for today. So for today, we did a lot of review, uh, just went through pretty much chapters uh, one and two for the most part. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and call it a day for here. Uh, homework is going to be chapter one and chapter two review problems. I would say, I would say probably just do the evens or just the odds or something like that. But like, you don't have to go through, you don't have to go through and do all of them. That's a lot of questions. Um, if, if you have the uh, Art of Problem Solving pre-algebra book, that is going to be what I'm going to be teaching out of. So um, please get it if you don't already have it. Um, there's a solutions manual for it um, that you can take a look at after you uh, have done the homework there. So um, unless you have any other questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and go. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.